this small weatherboard cottage looks like it's a fairly straightforward subject. It certainly had better days and I'm going to draw it, take it back to some of those better days. It's not going to be quite so battered in this drawing. I'm going to take off the boarding up of the windows in particular from my drawing and not show that top left corner which has been whacked by some sort of truck or digger or something I suspect. How I'm doing it is I'm starting with this right hand vertical line and then I come across with my horizontal line angled down slightly at that perspective angle. Now you might notice that I've actually established where the corners of the reference photo are on my paper. Since this subject goes almost to the edges, that's going to help me position this and get the proportions correct because I can reference how far the image is from the edge, both on my reference and therefore on my paper. So I'm just working out where this ground level line is. And there certainly is a big perspective trap in this scene. And in a few minutes, I'll just pause the drawing and explain to you exactly what it is, why it's such a problem. And it's the sort of trap which really does cause confusion, particularly as we go on to draw more complex buildings. It's something that because this is a relatively simple subject, we can get away with. But it's a tremendously helpful thing to be aware of so we can look for it carefully in our reference before we start to draw. It's one of the things that that time we invest in our observation and creative thinking before we put pen on paper really pays off. But having, having established the entire width of the building, which is not something I would always do, but because, as I said, I can reference in from the sides, I have, I now want to position these two windows because I can position them in from the ends the same way and then I can place the door between them, allowing for the foreshortening. So the door will be slightly closer to the left-hand window. I actually went and had a good look at what was behind these boarded up dark panels when I took the photo, so that I'd have an idea of what the windows were like behind. And for that reason, I can be confident that this is how they look. So as you can see, I'm trying to maintain the same perspective angle from the top of the right hand window to the top of the left hand window and the same at the base. I don't do as good a job as I would have liked. I feel like the top of this left hand window should slope down just slightly more and quite possibly the base of the left hand window should also slope down but on the other side on the right hand side slightly more. However now I position the doorway and as I said I'm just giving myself a few positioning marks to give me a chance to look back and think, is that in the right spot? Is there slightly more space on the right-hand side of the door than the left-hand side? And now I put the doorway in, the frame in. Need to work out exactly what I'm doing here at the base of the building with all these weeds. I decided to put the weeds in. Um, maybe they can be thought of as an escaped garden or something at the end. But this also highlights the importance of um, a point that I often make, and that's that it's often good to avoid drawing long, hard, straight lines, particularly where a building hits the ground, particularly where the building makes contact with dirt and with any, any natural substances, because we don't in life get a thick, hard, heavy line there. It's not the same as the roof line or perhaps one of the side walls where it can be perfectly smooth. Usually there are things such as little grasses or weeds growing up or small bits of rock or gravel or rubbish of some type has been blown up against the base of the building and therefore interferes with the effect of a long, straight, hard line. And if we want to draw, capturing a realistic effect, then it's not drawing the line that's important. It's creating the, the visual effect of what we're seeing. And so the marks I've used are my attempt to do that. And that's why I established that lower line for the building 
with a series of dots and dashes and whatnot. I wanted to be able to see where it was and, in fact, even to reposition it slightly without a long, heavy line. Those marks I could simply work in to the marks for the leaf litter and the little rocks and things. So it's certainly not obvious now. And with this roof, the pitched roof, you might notice I actually consciously looked at where those two top points are and I drew a line straight down to see what they aligned with in the building. And so the left-hand corner of the roof aligned pretty much with the left-hand side of the door and the right-hand corner of the roof aligned with something just in from the right side window. So I copied that in my placing. And this is what I call alignment, working by alignment. And it takes careful observation and then thinking it through and then doing it as accurately as possible. But it's how I can stay as accurate as possible drawing freehand. So just getting a sense of this angle here. And then the house is in outline form. So this house looks very simple, perspective angles, perspective lines, you know, it's two point perspective. So what's the problem? Why does this house have a perspective trap when it looks so straightforward? Well, let me tell you now. This cottage is a great example to show you a situation which can often trip us up when we're trying to work out perspective in a building. Now, we look at this and it looks a lot like what we expect to see from our perspective diagrams. We have a box and the top line angles down, the bottom line angles up, and at some point, they will meet on the eye level. And it appears as if that's what's happening here. But let me show you the real situation. Here we have our box. But this is the ground level. And we can see, in fact, it's not level. This is where the ground would have been if it were level. So this shape does follow our perspective diagrams. But this line down here does not. And this shaded part represents the difference in the height of the building of where it is now to where it would be if the ground were level. And it's important this becomes the angle because this becomes the angle that our perspective angles have to fit in the fan pattern for, not this line down here. And if you're finding this video helpful, then please help me out, hit the like button, leave a comment. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, why not? Now in life, what made it possible to see this was, it was much more obvious, of course, that the ground was sloping downhill. And if we look at the reference now and we're thinking about that, we can tell that that is a downhill slope on the gutter. But if we weren't particularly looking out for that, it would be easy to think that that, that sloping line is actually a perspective angle, which will meet on the eye level, that top line sloping down towards it. And that's not the case at all. But from a reference photo, even if we didn't have a street gutter in sight to make it a little more obvious, the thing that gives it away are these weatherboards nailed onto the front of the building. Now, those lines follow the perspective pattern. They fit in a fan shape between the uppermost and lowest perspective line. So knowing that, I simply need to work out which weatherboard is at ground level on the left hand side, the point where the building touches the ground. And if I draw a line horizontally from that weatherboard on the bottom left, right the way across, I can see that it's, I think it's three weatherboards up from the ground on the right hand side. So that tells me that the ground's not level because I know that if the ground were level, the ground would follow that perspective angle. And once we realize that, it's not so hard to visualize what's happening with our perspective theory box and what's happening 
in real life because in real life the ground is often not exactly flat, not exactly horizontal. So now I draw these weather boards in place. I don't want to make them too strong and too heavy or they will overwhelm the overall shape of the building and yet they are an important part of the effect. I don't intend to make them look really shabby and dirty but I still need to draw them in in some way and you can see that what happens is that the lowest perspective angle from the left hand corner straight across doesn't follow the ground level and therefore I need to have some part weatherboards coming across from the right and going into the slope at some point to fill the gap between where the horizontal base of the building would have been if the ground were level. And so I decided also to add a sense of curtains in our windows and so I do some sort of semi-curtain effect on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side as well. Now this little old, now derelict, but once happy worker's cottage is a great subject for drawing and also for just being aware of and not being worried by this perspective trap. The ground not being level, either uphill or downhill, is one of those things that often isn't really explained clearly in perspective videos. And particularly when the ground change isn't extreme, when it's closer to being level than not, it's enough to make a difference, but not enough to be so obvious if we're not thinking to look out for it every time. If we're not thinking, is the ground level? As one of our preliminary questions we ask ourselves as we start our creative thinking, as we start examining our reference to see what are the issues that I'm going to face. Do I understand visually what I'm drawing? Because it's very hard to draw what we don't understand. And now I'm just adding a few little dots to represent some of the shadows at the end of the weatherboards. I put just a shrub on this side because I didn't really want to draw that van. I wanted to make it look just a little more cottagey, a little more like, like a home. And some more marks on the ground to try and capture the effect of, of just the gravel and the, and the grass and so forth. It's not going to be a garden, I've decided. I'll, I'll try and draw it pretty much for how it's looking. But again, how we translate what we see visually into marks to create the effect of what we see is a very important skill to work at. We're not trying to draw lines around rocks or lines to represent blades of grass. We're trying to capture the effect of whatever it is we're seeing and therefore we use whatever marks will do that and look appropriate for the size and the scale and also for the, the marks we've used in the rest of the drawing as well. And my aim was to do a quick sketch. This took me 17 minutes in real time to do using a 0.3 millimeter pen that had the cottage not look brand new, but not have it looking as if it were falling apart quite so much. And I think all in all, I'm reasonably happy with the outcome. Hope you have a go drawing it. And of course, you'll find this reference photo on my channel community page so you can. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. A really interesting subject. As soon as I saw this little cottage in Tasmania, I knew I wanted to use it in a video somehow. So I was really pleased to have the chance to draw it now. A great subject, not too challenging in some ways, quite challenging in other ways. But look, whatever you end up drawing, however simple or tricky it may be, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.